today we're starting a new series and a new build. This is going to be very different from previous videos I've done on my channel. In fact, we're going to be focused on creating a city from scratch while also still talking about the helpful tips, hints, and ideas that go behind creating a city, especially in the way that I normally create cities. That's why I'm starting this build and learn series. It's focused on a more organic approach to building and teaching the way that I play the game. And I'm hoping this can lead into a really cool experience with Cities 2 where we can utilize this format moving into the new game. Now, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below with ideas and suggestions for our next video. Now, as you can see by the cinematics, you've had a good look at the map that I've chosen for this particular build. And you can find that map in the description below. I've also already set up my theme. I've used Theme Mixer to do this, and you can check out my tutorial on how to set up your own theme for your map. Today, I really want to focus in on how I plan, how I initiate the idea of where I want things to go, and sort of the thought process of that. And I think it's important you give your city a couple of things. First, you want a purpose. Why is the city there? What was the city popular for doing? Maybe it's a city built on a river and therefore has mills across the river, and that's where the downtown really got established from. Maybe it's a port city. This purpose should help guide you in terms of laying out your city. It can also give you some ideas as to what your city should incorporate. I'm thinking I want to create a more modern port city. I want some of the older industrial buildings to be relatively close to downtown, but I want the downtown to feel a little bit refreshed and modern. So given that it's a port city, that has been reflected in the map choice, right? So I want it to be coastal. I want plenty of access to water, especially a big body of water. So our port city is our economic success story to the city and why it exists. And I'm going to keep it all pretty coastal. Everything is going to be built as close to water as possible, including our downtown along with our industry. So the first thing I want to do on the actual map is go ahead and start purchasing land in the area that I want to build. Now, given that I'm playing modded and sandbox mode, this path might be a little different for you. Maybe you need to start with a smaller area if you're working through the fundamentals of the game in vanilla. Here's how I can start to mark these areas, right? Uh, in game, right? So that I know kind of what I want to do as I'm progressing. So if you're somebody that sets up an idea, maybe you save and you walk away and then you come back and you forget where you were, or maybe you just want to have kind of like a general plan. This is very helpful for getting an idea of what you want to do. Um, and that is using districts without any anything attached to the district, right? And I'm just going to use the district and I'm going to say, this is going to be my downtown. Now, uh, this is a pretty large area. I don't expect it to be maybe that big, right? It doesn't have to be. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set up an area right on the outside of this, right? And I'm going to kind of carve into it a little bit because I do realize it's a little bit large. So we're going to we're going to tweak that. Um, and then maybe we have it kind of over here. We angle it a little bit. Uh, this is going to be more of like a, a transitional area. OK, so what does that mean for me? This means that in that area, I'm intending to transition to whatever is next. OK, so back here would be suburb. Uh, that's what I want to back in this end of the square over here or end of the couple of squares is suburb. And then I would also like some suburb here. And let me actually combine those because they need to be they just need to be one square. Perfect. And I'm going to draw it all the way to the edge. So this is going to be a uh, suburb out here, which kind of makes sense, right? We're away from the town. Uh, and we are headed back towards the highway and you know, you could argue that maybe you want to put farmland or something, you know, way out here. Uh, let's go ahead and come up this way. Now I do realize that since we're on sort of a tropical, um, map here to some extent, we've kind of made it tropical, right? Uh, you could do something like have some hotels and resorts. I want to incorporate that sort of in the downtown. So I'm not necessarily going to draw a separate like district for that. Uh, but I may end up adding things as I go that'll say, you know, what's happening in that area uh, more specifically. And I'm going to put industry here. And obviously this is not meant to be all the industry, but in reality, what I expect is that the industry will kind of be, you know, fading into back here, running back this way, and then eventually we'll expand this way. So I know I'm saying this way a lot, but just bear with me. So the idea would be that anything beyond this point, probably going to be leaning industry, right? Anything out here, suburb, anything out here, suburb here though is our like population center okay and then our transitional area through here is just meant to remind me that i need to fade out of the buildings okay so this way you can get an idea of how big your city is now i can tell you this when i start putting down roads this may very well change a little bit especially the scale and size like i said this is a little bit bigger of an area than maybe I, i'm thinking in my head okay 
um, and I want to make sure that I don't overwhelm myself with too much to do um, because then I'll just be saying I don't want to like arbitrarily just fill something because I think it needs to be the downtown right so now you can use this in-game mechanic to help you plan and this may be sort of self-explanatory many of you may do this and that's totally fine I just want to make sure that if you're let's say you're relatively new to the game and you're you're kind of building and you're just trying to figure out how to make things seem more cohesive maybe this is something that can help you so the next thing for me is to start terraforming and I like to do that in a space that I'm going to start building which is always the downtown because I think the downtown is going to dictate the scale of everything else so what I would like to do is I would like to terraform uh, basically the coastline and what I want to do is I want to expand these beaches a little bit not necessarily um, expanding them more into the land area but I want to smooth this out okay so I don't want it to be a drop off like it is into the water also I may try to raise the uh, seafloor up a little bit so that the water uh, won't be as deep obviously but it might actually sh like brighten it up a little bit because the sand will be higher the water's going to look less as deep but also give a little bit more of a tropical vibe and with the river i think what i'm going to do is probably uh take out this little bit of like a it looks like a path for where maybe the river was supposed to be i'm going to probably take that out and we're going to probably lift the riverbed up some through here to make that a little bit closer to the to the height of whatever this comes out to be so this is all like a little bit more of the same height in terms of the uh, bottom of whatever water source we're messing with so that is kind of the plan here so let's start with beaches and i know i know a lot of folks have talked to me in the past about like terraforming and stuff and and sometimes i, I think terraforming can be a little bit of a daunting task uh because it can be a lot and it doesn't always work and i, I realize like you may not have an issue making beaches right that might seem relatively um straightforward but mountains and stuff like that are difficult and i think they're, they're also difficult for me so you don't have to be a professional right out the gate uh just know it takes time play with the tools and kind of mess around with it and eventually you'll sort of figure it out but ultimately what i just want to do here is i just want to make the slope into the water seem less aggressive i want it to be very smooth um just like a tropical beach area now with that what's also going to help is lowering the overall height around our coast now you can see this is a pretty you know decent decent slope and i don't need it that high all i want is something that represents you know a coastal area and in my mind uh, i'm thinking florida or something like that although i'm gonna have hills in the background as you can see there's some nice hills back there i'm probably gonna leave those throw some trees on them um, and have that as a nice backsplash but i am gonna go ahead and start lowering uh, a lot of the area closer to the water and i want this just above the sea level now part of that is because i see a lot of cities being built and especially like when you're new and i used to do this all the time where all your water edges all your water edges look like this right they're all these sort of cliff edges they're cliff textures showing up uh and i i hate when like i hate when I, I used to make cities and i would have these cliffs like around downtown into the water you know that you like the only thing you do is put a seawall on or something along those lines um so i don't really want that here I want this again to be very very low um to the coastal plain and uh i want it to you know almost be just above the water as close as we can get and that's something that i've been doing for a while now is just pushing uh elevation downward especially around the coast so that represents sort of what i see more normally right you can you could do a seawall and stuff like that but at the same time how how many you know miles or feet can you dedicate to a seawall before it seems unrealistic for the city to spend that sort of money to fix it you know i'm going to do this all the way to the river and some of these areas we will do later i'm not going to necessarily drag this out with terraforming the entire map right this second but i do want to get our main work area set up and this is very very important uh that you do this before you start getting into a lot of road building and stuff like that or you're going to end up with a mess like all your roads are going to be all over the place in terms of height maybe that's what you're going for just beware that uh, cities doesn't always play nicely with that because your buildings will kind of start to act funky and it'll be a giveaway when you're taking screenshots or something like that that hey this this doesn't seem you know exactly like what we what you're intending to do you know what i'm saying like it'll just start to look bumpy and you know it just doesn't necessarily handle terraforming great in the base game uh, with buildings just being plopped down so we need to figure out how we want to do this space i'm going to try and see if i can 
Oops, got a little bit more here to do that I forgot. Uh, I'm gonna try to see if I can level the kind of islandish area off um, with what the rest of this is. So while I'm terraforming, I wanna talk about a couple other topics here. So one thing is looking for inspiration. Now, obviously this can play into the whole idea of finding some sort of economic value to your city or what drove people here, why did it start? But inspiration is really important too. You can find obviously a bazillion images online or you can find uh, Google map spaces that you want to focus on. One thing I would very, very much recommend is if you are new to cities or you're just trying to find some local inspiration to something you wanna create, build small and build something that you know. So I think one of the more helpful things that I've tried to do in many of the cities, especially early on, was instead of trying to go out and build the uh, next New York City or Chicago or some massive place, even European cities, which I have a very hard time sort of creating, I would focus on smaller towns, uh, cities that I had become accustomed to through travels, um, even if I had just visited there a couple of times, at least I knew enough and I could reference a few photos to create something that from memory felt um, authentic to what I was accustomed to. And I don't do one-to-ones by any means. And this is not a suggestion to do a one-to-one -one, as much as it's just seeking inspiration from something that you are familiar with. Now, if you have some sort of inspiration that you want to utilize for your city build, I recommend breaking it down into basic pieces. So for example, I always start building with my downtown and you'll hear me talk about that a couple of times. I start with my downtown and I build around it. And often that gives me a vision for a lot of other things. It gives me scaling of other things. So that's usually my focus. So probably in a couple of episodes, we'll be setting up our skyline and really, really trying to establish the city's style and feel, which is all things that you can affect based on so many different variables, including building choices, road design, colors, themes. All of this can play a factor in how your city sort of comes together in the end. So let's real quick touch on theme. And I know that I've already told you guys I selected my uh, theme via theme mixer. I've already mixed it. It's done. And it's kind of a little bit of a tropical feel with the white sandy beaches, but it doesn't go full tropical. I'm not really exactly sure how to explain it. Again, I'm picturing somewhere maybe in like northern Florida or something like that on the coast. But remember, the ideas behind why your city exists, what's the economic success, that can play a part in your theme. If it's a Pacific Northwest build, that's going to look different than this, right? The sand is going to be different. The overall tones and colors are going to be different. And that can really help you create a city that's more unique. Not to mention one of my favorite things to play with is just messing around with watercolor and tree mixes. So watercolor can be adjusted via theme mixer, but forest brush, you can basically create a cluster of trees and you can pick this out based on what you want. I've already got like a bare bone selection made, but we'll probably tweak that for like coastal areas in the city with more like palm trees and stuff. But we'll get to that at some point. I'm going to go ahead and actually create a little bit of a lake on the backside of the, where the city is going to be. Uh, this is going to be a rough sketch for a lake and we're going to see how we can kind of modify it to fit in a little bit better but i feel like this river needs something besides just river it keeps it's got all these like little curves to it and stuff and i kind of want some sort of body of water that isn't just beach so we're going to play with this might be a little challenging obviously we can always get rid of it if we need to but for now we're going to see what this can turn into in the long run so i know that this episode is pretty much focused on just planning we're not really doing any construction and i thought that that was significant because i think there's a lot of times that we jump the gun and we start building before having some of these things figured out and i really wanted to highlight that you can put a lot of thought into your city builds before you get to really the the roads and infrastructure and stuff that can play a big part of how you set everything else up I think it's important to note that you can go far beyond what I'm doing in this video for planning. I've already gone in, for example, and changed out a lot of the resident vehicles and some of the commercial vehicles to be workshop. Now that can also be reflected in where your geographic location of your city is. I've just done it to American vehicles. Uh, they look better and, and tend to add just a touch of realism. So that's something you can consider and you can do that with advanced vehicle options. But that's like one more thing I've gone ahead and done to prepare for the city. Now, the other couple things are your building selections. If you wanna go ahead and go in the workshop, I would just make sure that you have some of the things we've talked about in mind before you start picking buildings because there can be a little bit of cohesiveness between what you're selecting. You may want particular roads, you may want particular buildings to fit your area, geographic location, the style that you're looking for. Maybe you need some extra props to make things you're looking for come together. There's plenty of stuff available if you wanna go the workshop route. If you're sticking to more of a vanilla playthrough, a lot of this information still applies where you might have slightly different paths to get there. It's still significant to pick a city purpose and to have some ideas about how your city was made, 
how it's constructed in a way, right? Giving it a little bit of a blueprint for how you make decisions moving forward. Ultimately, I focus on aesthetics, as I'm sure some of you do, and most of you probably know that that's typically my focus anyway, but I really want to emphasize that the ideas here apply to just about everyone. You may not have all the mods to customize certain things or do a few things here and there, but you can still sort of incorporate ideas into whatever you're building, however you're building. For now, I think we have a great canvas to work with. We have our area leveled out. We have our areas marked for what I want to put where. And I think we have a good plan in place. So next episodes, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the customization to get our city where it needs to be. And we're going to probably work on roads and infrastructure. So if you enjoyed today's video and you want to catch the next one, be sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below with your thoughts or ideas for upcoming episodes, and be sure to hit the like button. All of this helps get this video out there and I would really appreciate it. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.